the nitrosonium ion has the chemical formula NO plus one. The nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. The oxygen contributes six for a total of 11 valence electrons. But then we notice that the ion has a plus one charge. So we remove one of the valence electrons to give us a total of 10. We'll recognize that 10 electrons is also the number for cyanide ion and for carbon monoxide. Therefore, the nitrosonium ion is isoelectronic to cyanide and isoelectronic to carbon monoxide. We can satisfy the octet rules for nitrogen and for oxygen by combining them with a triple bond. So we notice that we have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. These three pairs of electrons are shared by nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen has these six plus this two as a lone pair, so it satisfies the octet rule. Oxygen has these six electrons plus a lone pair on the other side, so it also has eight valence electrons, and we are able to satisfy the octet rule for both nitrogen and oxygen. Hydroxylamine is a useful reducing agent in organic synthesis. It has the chemical formula NH2OH. We can think of it as ammonia, where we've replaced one of the hydrogens with a hydroxyl group. Each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. The oxygen contributes six, because it's a total of 11. Each of the hydrogen atoms contributes one valence electron for an additional three, gives us a total of 14 electrons for the entire molecule. We notice that we can satisfy the duet rule for each of the hydrogens, and we're able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen and oxygen by combining all the atoms together by single bonds. In the process, we notice that we end up with, as is very common for nitrogen, we end up with a lone pair on nitrogen. Nitrogen trichloride has the chemical formula NCl3. Each of the chlorine atoms contributes seven valence electrons. Since there are three such atoms, that gives us a total of 21 valence electrons from the chlorines. Nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. So this is going to be a 26 electron system. We're able to satisfy the octet rule by putting eight electrons around each of the chlorines. That gives us 24. And then we have an additional lone pair on the nitrogen. We notice in the process of that, having three single bonds plus a lone pair, we are also able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen. We can think of nitrogen trichloride as sort of a halogenated version of ammonia. And we notice in this uh, particular molecule, it's a little different than we might be used to because normally we would put the most electropositive and the largest atom in the center, but because of the stoichiometry, we end up having nitrogen in the center and then chlorines around the edge. And we also notice that we've satisfied the octet rule for chlorine, but we have not expanded the octet. Nitrogen triiodide has the chemical formula Ni3. As we saw for nitrogen trichloride, each of the halogens is going to contribute seven valence electrons. So that gives us a total of 21. Nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. So this is yet another 26 electron system. We allocate eight electrons around each of the iodine atoms. And we put a lone pair on nitrogen. In the process, we are able to satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms in the molecule. We had noted for the case of nitrogen trichloride that it was somewhat unusual in that the central atom was the most electronegative atom and the smallest one, 
whereas normally the central atom will be the largest and most electropositive. So that has an important consequence in this particular molecule because we have iodine, which is very large and very electropositive on the outside, and we have the very electronegative nitrogen in the center. As a result, this is an incredibly unstable compound, and it is an explosive that can be set off merely by either a gust of wind or by a very slight tap. And that's a consequence of bringing together these very large electropositive uh, atoms so close around a very electronegative central atom. Urea has the chemical formula CONH2-2. We can think of it as being derived from the parent acid, carbonic acid, where we replace two of the OH groups by amines. In the process, we've made a type of compound called a diamide. So we can think of urea as being the diamide of the parent acid, carbonic acid. We have two nitrogen atoms, which each contribute five valence electrons. Carbon contributes four, oxygen contributes six, and each of the hydrogen atoms contributes one. So we have a total of 24 electrons in our system. And we're able to satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And to do that though, we need to have a carbon-oxygen double bond. And we might recognize that as having been derived from the parent acid, carbonic acid. Urea is a compound of tremendous historical importance because it was synthesized by Friedrich Wöhler from inorganic precursors. So he was able to show that there was nothing intrinsically special about organic molecules, that while they could be synthesized by biological systems, it was also possible to synthesize them from inorganic precursors. Ethylene diamine can be written as NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. We can think of it as ethane, where we've substituted amino groups on both the one and two carbons. Each nitrogen atom contributes five valence electrons. Each of the carbons contributes four. Each of the hydrogens, and there's eight of those, contributes one valence electron. Therefore, we have a total of 26 electrons that we allocate. And we notice that we're able to satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen. We're able to satisfy the octet rule for the carbons in the central part of the chain. And we're able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen. But we notice that each nitrogen has a lone pair. So therefore, it's going to act as a base. And in fact, ethylene diamine is an incredibly important ligand in inorganic chemistry. And it's special because it is a bidentate ligand. It can actually bind to the central metal ion through two different locations. At one end from this lone pair, and at the other end from this lone pair. And in the process, it forms a five-member ring. Acetonitrile has the chemical formula CH3. CN. This compound is an incredibly important solvent in organic chemistry and in analytical chemistry. We can think of it as having been derived from hydrocyanic acid, where we replace the acidic hydrogen by an alkyl group, in this case by a methyl group. You still have the C triple bond N group. So in cases and organic molecules, we call those types of compounds nitriles. Each carbon contributes four valence electrons, so a total of eight from the carbons. Nitrogen contributes five, 
and each of the hydrogens contributes one valence electron for a total of 16 electrons in the entire compound. We're able to satisfy the octet rule for the carbons by having a single bond to this carbon from the methyl group and having this particular carbon being triple bound to nitrogen. We have satisfied the duet rule for the hydrogens in the methyl group. I thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a good one.